So I'm sure you're wondering where I've been. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, it's been a while, I know, but uh, we're in a new place now. I got my own little, I almost fell, Jesus. Uh, we got our nice little, oh my God, I almost fell again. Maybe it's not so nice. But we got we got a new new place here. Uh, I'm gonna probably be filming in my garage. It's a nice little area. Um, keep my car here, talk about it. Um, thank you for all the nice comments, all the encouragement that you guys have left me over the past few months. It's been really, really nice. And um, it's been such an encouragement to get back into this in the first place. So thank you guys again. Um, so I want to do a little video for you guys about how this car has been for the last three years. Um, it's been it's been a little bit of a bumpy ride. Some years have been better than others. Uh, but without further ado, let's let's get into it. So in year one, it was a pretty good year. I remember um, the car checked out, everything was really nice. Uh, one thing that didn't come up when I was actually there to look at the car was the manifold. It's not the manifold itself, but it was where the two pipes meet at the exhaust. The bolts had rusted so bad that they had just split entirely. It was the first time I'd ever heard my car sound anything like a straight pipe would sound like. Uh, it was popping, gurgling. It's pretty amazing. It's kind of what, what, what got me into doing exhaust modifications in the first place. So something I had to address fairly quickly because when it wasn't popping and gurgling, when it was fully expanded and coming apart, it was making like very, very loud screeching noises, which sucked. It was really annoying to deal with that. And uh, you know, everybody was always looking at me and like I had just bought this nice car. I was really happy about it. And all of a sudden people were staring at me because it looked just really, ratchet and gross making all these weird noises um, so that was actually really easy to fix uh, luckily I have a really good mechanic um, he's really really good to us when it comes to pricing and labor um, he just put it up on the hoist uh, got me some new bolts he didn't even charge me for labor 20 bucks easy done I think it took maybe like 10 minutes uh, so yeah that was that was the very first thing that ever went wrong on this car if you even consider that something going wrong uh, but let's move on to number two this happened within the first year of ownership too. So I picked up this car uh, sometime in September, three years ago, so that must have been like 2017 or something. The bumper got hit in the parking lot, which sucked because the back of these cars don't look too great to begin with. Um, I hate the bumper style. Um, they're gross, they, they pop out, they protrude a lot, and they just, it doesn't look sporty. Uh, so yeah, that got hit. It wasn't too bad, but Canadian winters will destroy your car. They are horrible, negative 40 salt everywhere it doesn't matter how much you wash your car the salt will eventually get it somewhere and it got my bumper where the paint was chipped and it slowly just ate away at everything and it's just been getting worse ever since and i've just been bouncing back and forth to whether it's worth to spend a few hundred dollars to get a new bumper and have it painted uh so yeah that's the second thing that ever went wrong um again if you can even consider that that's, that's something that went wrong versus you know just bad luck bad timing um, but yeah, so that's everything that happened in year one. Year one was pretty good um, in terms of engine reliability, maintenance costs, everything was pretty great. Uh, the car had everything basically done for it. It had its brakes done, um, oil changes. The last owner took amazing care of this car. Uh, he had even provided me this really thick uh, binder just full of documents from dealer servicing and everything. So this was like a boomer cared for car, which is something that you really want to look for when you're buying used because those are the people that are like just meticulous about everything and make sure that when they sell the car, it's in really good condition. Okay, so year two, this is when things started to go a little wonky um, in the in the service department. My starter died. It was negative 20 degrees. I was stuck in a underground parking lot. Actually, it wasn't even underground, it's above ground. So I was getting battered by wind. CAA is a great company. They do a lot to make sure that you get to where you need to go safely. Uh, they, they've always been really reliable when the right people come. Uh, my starter had died completely. Nothing was working. Pushing the car was not working either. This is a massive ordeal because the first guy came with a flatbed. He couldn't fit in the, in the underground garage. And he said, my car was too low to put on the flatbed. I said, that's not right. You can put my car on a flatbed. I've seen people put Ferraris on flatbeds. Like that, that's how rich people get their cars around without putting kilometers on it. I don't understand. I said, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to call another driver. So, you know, again, waiting out there, getting battered by the cold because the driver is like 10 minutes away. I don't want to wait inside. And then the next driver comes with a tow truck. And then he says he can't take my car because it's too low. So I'm like, okay, the last driver came here and said that exact same thing. He's like, don't worry. I'm going to have another driver come. 
Then the same driver from the first time comes back again and tells me, okay, you just need to push the car outside. So the, the driver with the tow truck actually was a very nice guy. I think to an extent he was he was kind of correct because this car does have the sport suspension, it's very low. And it can be a little you know, nerve wracking for those drivers to put it up on just something like a tow truck because if they damage my car, they will have to pay out of pocket for it. That's just their policy. That's what they explained to me. Um, so I, I kind of understood that, uh, but the original guy came back. Uh, the last guy had helped me push the car outside and so we're able to get her up. Now this driver was the sketchiest driver I've ever seen in my life. He was, he was nice, he was a nice guy, but he was on his phone the whole time we were in the truck. He was swerving into oncoming traffic at times. It was just like really, really unsettling. And I, I, I hope to not ever be in a position like that again. Um, that was kind of a one-off because the other CAA drivers I've had have been like very, very nice people, but this was just like a really sketchy experience that I don't want to ever have again. Uh, especially, you know, when your car is uh, just sitting on the back of this guy's truck and he's, you know, not paying attention, swerving around and checking his iMessages. So we got to the mechanic. Uh, the starter was a pretty easy fix. He had it ready for me the next day. I just gave him a call. And uh, I think it costed me something like $600 or something like that to get the starter fixed. So let's move on to thing number two. Um, this was my AC compressor. So this is a pretty big deal. I made a pretty big deal about this on my YouTube channel and on Instagram because the day it exploded sucked because this whole time I thought it was lifter tick. And so I had been doing so much research on lifter tick, if it's gonna destroy my car, if it's gonna kill my performance. Um, I was really concerned about a lot of things and I didn't want my engine just exploding on me when only one day too because I didn't really understand like what it was. Turns out it wasn't lifter tick. It also turns out lifter tick apparently is not a big deal and it's a very common issue on these cars that's just you know owners just ignore it after a while it can be solved through um doing some interesting things by like holding the throttle at 3000 rpm and bringing it down to 2000 after a certain amount of time and bring it back up and getting rid of like air bubbles and the oil and stuff like that um that's that's a whole other thing um it wasn't lifter tick it was my ac compressor and the reason i think this happened was because this is an old car i think it's like 13 years old now or something like that it's an old ac compressor this car was not exactly rated for the power that it's making now Yes, the N52 engine is rated for however much power the 330 makes, um, but perhaps they use a cheaper AC compressor on this car because it's a lower model or something. Maybe there's one specific part on the compressor that they use that's just rated for this power spec. So because it was old, the car had been used and I had modded it, it wasn't able to handle the force of acceleration on the actual engine and with the belt. So. It just exploded on me downtown, um, which sucked because downtown is the last place you want your car to explode. Um, I had no idea what the damages were before I got out of the car, so I just remember I was in the car. I heard this very loud pop noise, and then the rattling from the compressor had stopped. I remember getting like a bunch of lights on my dash, like the alternator wasn't charging, which made sense obviously because the belt had flown off the front of the engine. So we stopped off at the nearest side street. I called CAA. The driver was there, I think in like 15, 20 minutes, he picked up my car. I had checked out the damages. The belt had actually just like flown off the front, had not damaged the radiator at all, but the compressor disc at the front that's like, that the belt hooks onto, had just like <laughs> exploded everywhere. There was bearings everywhere. It was, it was pretty funny when I had realized that the belt hadn't broken, the radiator was fine, and it was just the compressor itself that had been damaged. Um, the repair bill, however, was not funny. Uh, this was a big, big bill, the biggest one I've had for this car yet. Um, it came in at $2,100. I was quoted about fifteen to $1,700 for this. Um, my mechanic doesn't deal with AC. He doesn't have the proper tools for storing refrigerant and putting refrigerant in cars. So I had to take it to a different mechanic that he had recommended to me. Um, and so my car was stuck at this mechanic for a month which meant I couldn't make videos or do anything. At the time, I still didn't have a bike. I, we just had the Mustang and we were very busy with work and school, so I, we, I couldn't really do anything. Then the third thing that happened in year two was my sunroof. This was the most annoying thing in the world to deal with. Um, it happened out of nowhere for no apparent reason. It was so in, in infuriating because there, there, I get, like, there's just no reason for it to happen. I, I don't understand, like just randomly one day my sunroof stopped working. And so I remember I had to go up from the top of the car 
and I just saw all these, these metal bars bent out of shape in all sorts of different directions. There was rubber pieces everywhere. So it, it seemed that like one piece of weather stripping got stuck in the like conveyor belt and it had just dragged everything back and ripped everything out. So I had to take all that stuff out, um, managed to not get my fingers trapped under there and crushed by the sunroof. Um, and it was just, it was a whole ordeal and it's not something I fix yet because it's just, it's not worth it. It works halfway now. I can just get it to pop up. That's all I need. Um, it sucks that it doesn't go all the way back because there's some beautiful summer days here where I just want to throw it back, but it can't. It sucks. That's why it's just <laughs> such an annoying thing to deal with. Um, and I don't feel like shelling out like two grand to get a whole new sunroof assembly and put it in. So yeah, that's, that's all of your two and get ready for year three because it's it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a, a fun one. Okay, so we made it to year three, kind of present. Let's get through this because it's been a little it's been a little bit of a video now. Um, let's see if I can kind of speed run this. So I had gone six months clean record, not a single issue. Granted, this car has never had a real engine malfunction. Nothing on the inside. It's always been like stupid external things. Um, but yeah, I was so happy, like feeling invincible on top of the world, nothing can go wrong. All of a sudden I'm driving down the street, snow everywhere, I hit a patch of ice and my car hits the curb. I'm thinking, okay, there's a little bit of a hit, kind of shook me up a bit, but it's fine. You know, I'm gonna just drive it to my girlfriend's house and things will be fine. You know, I had no lights, nothing weird had happened. Um, so I figured it was fine. So I took it to my girlfriend's house, got out, looked at the rim, rim was, garbage smashed it sucked because these are nice rims and my winter rims were the nicest rims that i had but oh well you know stuff happens not a big deal um got in my car to drive back home and all of a sudden the sensor's is going off and i noticed that my steering wheel is like this but my car is going straight so what happened was when i hit the curb only my back wheel hit and it had bent the like wheel assembly inwards or something, or maybe it was outwards, I think it bent it outwards. So my car was correcting like this to make it drive straight, but on the road what people saw was my car driving sideways and forward. <laughs> so I had been driving around embarrassingly for like, I think almost a month like this because it took so long to find the rear assembly for this car. Um, I had to go to this place called Dimmer Heaven Really nice guys up there. Um, they take insurance write-offs, um, buy them for cheap, take them apart, and then sell them for parts. Um, they were so, so nice to me. <clears throat> I got really lucky because I called and he said they have one left tire assembly or wheel assembly. Um, I don't even know if that's the right term, but I just can't remember like what, because it was multiple parts, just the whole side piece. Luckily the frame didn't bend either. That was really, was really a good thing because if the frame bent the car would have been garbage and that would have sucked but yeah went there they told me they didn't have any parts and i said well you told me over the phone that you did have parts then they said let me check they found one from a 328 now my whole rear side is fixed and that cost me a cool 900 bucks it was i think 400 for everything then i think maybe like a couple hours of labor or something like that um, my mechanic was really good he managed to get the alignment like almost perfect uh, without any alignment tools, which is pretty crazy. Um, but for another, I think a couple weeks after that, my car was still, um, <laughs> had the wheel tilted the other way um, instead of this way, because it had just, like the alignment was just like a little, little tiny bit off. Um, again, luckily I have one of my friends that works at a dealership and they were able to get me in there for a lot cheaper. I think BMW was quoting me something like $250 for an alignment, which was just really, really stupid. Um, if I had gone to BMW, they probably would have reset my steering angle sensor too, which would have solved this issue that I'm having now currently. I mean, what are you gonna do? Um, I got a really cheap alignment and a really good one uh, because of some connections, which was which was really, really great. Um, which brings me to the current issue that I'm having, which is related to <laughs> the car hitting the curb, which is my steering angle sensor that hasn't been reset yet. But yeah, that's that's about everything. Again, thank you guys so much. Um, your nice comments have been so great. Even the mean ones have been <laughs> really, really funny to read. I might do a video on those because some of you guys say some just like really, really funny things. Um, so yeah, again, thanks for the support and I hope to be making lots more videos.